you can do anything that you set your mind to. So I always say impossible is nothing. From aiding the rehabilitation process to helping them defy their circumstances and the odds, sport can give disabled people a new lease on life. I didn't really look after myself in my 20s. Um, took drugs, smoked, drank, just uh, basic party life. Well, not basic, it was quite hectic. And then when I was 30, I found out I had kidney failure and I went on to dialysis. And then um, when I was 34, I went work walking on the beach and um, I didn't realise the rocks were as hot as what they were. Um, and I had third degree burns on my feet and I had such bad neuropathy um, because of the narrowed arteries because I was also smoking. Um, I didn't feel it. And that was 2010 and started the journey of the amputations. The main thing is acceptance, that your body is changing. You know, that the way you look is completely different to what you were before because they're not only um, the physical changes, but then there's the scarring as well. Um, so that was the main thing that I had to overcome was um, firstly looking completely different and then adapting to life without limbs. It's, it's, it's a complete mind shift. I found sport um, as a disabled person. so. That helped me tremendously through sports science. And I fell in love again um, once I started back with uh, sports science in 2012. It's a long time now. Um, and it's become more intense because I decided a year ago to take up hand cycling. So the training's become more intense and the passion has become more intense. I do um, hit sessions. I do arm ergo. Um, mainly upper body uh, training, uh, free weights. Um, and then I do hand cycling. So that all, all the gym training builds up to um, strengthening me on the bike. I mean, if you get to a stage where you're in the Paralympics, you're, I mean, I think you pretty much exceeded what able-bodied people could do because of the mindset. I think the challenge is to get people to support it. You know, that's the major thing, um, that everybody makes a big hoo-ha about the Olympics. Um, and very few, and in fact, Supersport doesn't really cover the Paralympics as well as what they should. So I definitely think that um, support is what's needed. Um, you know, within our communities and within our cities. Um, you know, let's make bigger events. There are hundreds of mountain biking events uh, within PPA, but there are no hand cycling events, which is quite sad. And I firmly believe that every moment we have, um, we need to turn an opportunity to make life better for ourselves. It's phenomenal how far disability has come and I think sport often allows that exposure and allows people to excel and to feel good about themselves. Culturally there's, there's huge barriers to limb loss and disability um, so I think a lot of awareness needs to be made and I, and I think it's a lot more grassroots awareness. The primary cause for amputation is diabetes and the most effective way of controlling your blood sugar is exercise. So we really do motivate and push, push towards it. So we've got quite a few amputees getting into that go back to surfing. Um, we've got quite a lot of amputees that do mountain biking, um, road riding. We've got a Bridoni amputee, a couple of them that have gone back to rugby and soccer. Uh, we've got amputees that get back to road running. You know, I think for a lot of people that are faced with the challenge of disability, they then really go for it and want to push their physical ability. Without my sport, without my tennis on the offset, I would be a much, yeah, a much different person than you're seeing today. So it was interesting for me um, when it came to my tennis and playing, deciding that I was going to play competitively irrespective of what anyone else said. Because let's face it guys, we all know haters are going to hate. So you, you either rise above it or you don't. So I tossed the ball up with my weaker side, my left hand, and obviously predominant play with my right hand. My highlight was being chosen to represent Western Province in the under 18 um, category back in 2006. And I was the first person with a slight disability to do so. You're playing against able-bodied people. Um, and I think for me, from a mental health perspective, there needs to be more awareness um, as to the importance that sports can play in terms of that field. Um, I was 
playing soccer in the on the open field in um there was a loose cable hanging uh, from top to the bottom and I ran into it. Um I was not a cool man was a obvious. I got never wear that round me and gaan. Ja, I was for a year was ik uh Roy Kreis, 17 operaties. En ja, dat ik uit de hospital ik kom met mij in die kaap gewerkt en toen zette me in de school bij Astra school en van graad 7 af. Toen toen zijn we sport bij de school, dus ik heb eerst de atletiek gedaan. Toen zit toen zit golf ook. Toen vat ik golf en daar zo ik uh, in golf geraakt dat ik met zit ja. Ik heb bijna gepraktijd en gepraktijd dus daar zo kom ik heb Goed, um, daar kom ik spelen goed golf en het is net meer practice en ik nooit opgegeven. Ik voel ze ik voel ze goede meer als ik goede soort speel van als een goede soort dat je slaan. Het dat voelde mij bij goed om ik kan er te jaar um, speel golf zo en dan ook aan goede spelers wees in naar een en en dat is able golf en ja. That's what I'm going to do. If um, more time and exposure was given to para sport, people would appreciate um, how much effort we as para athletes have to, have to put in to be able to excel. A person's mind plays a pivotal role. Sport for me hasn't always will be about running my own race, being the best that I can be. Whether you are an able-bodied athlete or para-athlete, if you believe it, you can achieve it.